here we've got Tuba, who's the grandma. We've got Chila, who's Tuba's daughter. And we've got Doge, who is Chila's daughter. So we've got three generations, a 12 months, four years and nine years. Interesting Tibetan masters, so, as I said, started um, well in 1997 when I, when I got Tuba. I'd looked at various rare breeds and I actually picked up a small inexpensive dog book called uh, A Guide to Selecting a Large Breed written by somebody called Joan Palmer and uh, I saw the picture and the description of the Tibetan Mastiffs in there and had to find out more. Um, needless to say when I actually did meet the dog in the flesh for the very first time in, in the Derbyshire Peak District we met uh, three, three dogs up there on the farm and uh, that was the breed for us without a doubt. <laughs> and I was quite lucky because being a rare breed they're not readily available. The pet, Tibetan Mastiff bitches only come into season once a year, unfortunately all at the same time. So therefore puppies are not readily available throughout the year. Um, Puppies are generally born in the December to February period and then for the rest of the year nothing. In this breed then a very large amount of white on the chest but the Tibetans would say, Tibetan folklore would say that that would indicate the sign of a brave heart. The black spots, tan spots above the eyes which the Tibetans say proves that uh, the Tibetan Mastiff never sleeps, it's always got it's always got a, a pair of eyes open on guard even when it's asleep. Which people ask why do you do this? Uh, well we just enjoy doing it like any other hobby but it's certainly uh, n not a, a cheap option if you're going to do it right. <laughs> 